Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you a cool pendant using uh, Pebio paints. So to start with you're going to need a sheet of grease proof paper, wax paper or baking paper depending on what you call it and I have that laid out on my desk here and then you're going to need select uh, prism paints and now let me just show you what we are planning on making we're going to be making uh, paint skins so here's one let me just bring you out for a second <clears throat> there we are so this was using Pepio prism paints and Pepio moon paints here's another one with just the prism paints <clears throat> uh, here was a mixture of moon and prism again another mixture of moon and prism again a mixture and here is one where I just added a little bit of moon onto the side of the prism and this is what we are going to be making and we need them to be nice and dry so before uh, you make your project you need to have these skins drying for about two days so uh, just prepare for that okay so choose your paints and so here are the ones that I have chosen so the prism line is ones that creates these beautiful cells and then the moon is kind of this really uh, basic effect but when combined with the uh, prism paints it creates a really cool effect so here are the colors that I am using uh, this is almond green and this one is let's see pearl green you can see the name there this one is leaf and finally this one is emerald I know that one and then this one is just a pearl for the moon okay so you're going to take each of them and open them up and what I like to do is I like to uh, pour some of the paint in the lid here so you can see that there's a bit of a bezel here because that allows you to see what your color is because when you open up the paint pot you can see it's very different from the original effect so that's something I like to do when they first arrive so just take a skewer of some kind and give a very thorough mix the uh, better the mix uh, the better the effect so just go and stir vigorously and now depending on how long your Pepio paint has been sitting around um, that will dictate how much you need to mix because sometimes if it's been lying around for like six months or more you'll find that the mica particles in the paint will have stuck to the wall so you might need to go and scrape the wall and then continue mixing just to mix those particles in like so okay so I've got them all mixed up and now we're ready to move so start with the prism paints And I'm just gonna at random apply them to uh, my wax paper. Okay. So that was the leaf. Uh, this one was the pearl green you can see it's quite a different colour and I like to apply them at random you can try painting a picture if you want but the thing is with these is they're they, um, very similar to Swelligant they kind of do their own thing which is really cool um, but if you're trying to do something really specific with it you're going to be sorely disappointed because these really don't listen they um the nice thing about them is that they just do their own thing and you'll end up with something really cool and unique each time around so that's basically the approach I have to Swelligant as well which is a really cool um, medium that creates patinas on polymer clay and that one just does its own thing as well you can somewhat control it but you get the best effects when you just play with it. Okay, so I'm placing down all of the prism ones. 
and that's quite important because you need a lot of this and very very little of the moon. The moon you can apply a tiny tiny amount and just keep in mind that the moon what happens with that is it actually uh, stops the prism from doing what it usually does and it creates a completely different effect so if you want a layered bubbly look don't apply any moon so I'll show you that in a second All right. so that would be enough um, and then if you just left this you would get an effect very similar to this where you have all of the colors kind of intermingling with each other and creating a really beautiful intricate layered effect however if you apply the moon all of the blue in here is um, prism and only the white is the moon so hopefully you can see here this is the only prism effect we got in here other than that we've got a really light speckled effect so that is something just to keep in mind so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this one like it is and then I'm just gonna shift this down a little bit and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to see me do another piece that is just prism and it has moon in it as well this one however I want to leave as it is because it looks really nice so let me just shift this down okay and I'm just gonna start playing around here so again I'm just gonna lay down basically exactly what I've done over here um, and I will skip forward and then you can see what I do with the moon okay and you can already see that this one has started to work it's starting to bubble a bit and that is exactly what we want okay now for this one over on the side I'm just going to grab a skewer and I just want to kind of stretch it out just a bit over here and then I might just gently intermingle all those colours a little bit not too much and I'm going to bring over our moon paint and you only need a small amount and I'm going to dip it right in the middle and we'll just leave it at that and we will see what it looks like don't go haywire with the moon you just want to start off with a very small amount and see how it develops because it develops very quickly okay and this one I'm also just gently mixing a bit together and you can go back this has a working time of about uh, half an hour to an hour so you can go back and add things if you feel that you need it this one I feel like we're missing a bit of that dark paint so I'm just going to add some and I also think we need a little bit more of that emerald this one I feel also needs a little bit more emerald so I'll just gently dash that across okay and you can see already what's developing over here it has this really cool bubbly almost kind of like a fungi effect I don't know how else to explain it um, but basically that is going to continue to spread across the entire piece so you want I'm probably just going to leave it at one drop with that one and we'll see how it develops uh, if it develops well I'm gonna keep watching this for about 15 minutes see how it goes and then if it develops well then uh, I'll leave it however if I feel that it needs more I'll come back and show you where I add more um, so just go and make a whole bunch of pieces if you want I've already got a few done because we're going to be using a few in our project so go have fun they take about two days to dry before you can lift them straight off of the greaseproof paper um, and they will lift straight off of the greaseproof paper you don't need to worry um, about it sticking if you get the right wax paper um, so definitely go and do that and I will show you what it looks like in about 15 minutes okay and you can see how they are developing this one I think is enough with that whole sheet you can see it's really starting to spread out 
and so I'm just going to leave it at that one drop of uh, moon to all of that prism. You can see how dramatic that effect is. And this one is developing nicely as well. So I'm just going to leave them now for about two days and you'll see what they look like at the end of that. Okay, and so here they are now that they have been drying. And I have actually left them for about a week so that they are paper dry. You'll find that after around three days you can remove them from the daily paper by just peeling them off but you'll find that they still kind of tacky and have a very plasticky feel to them after about a week or so they're really nice dry and hopefully you can tell by the sound that it makes it's very nice but you can see the patterns are fantastic and with that one drop of little moon paint you can see how big a difference that has made so now that they are nice and papery and uh, all dry, we can now start cutting them out to create our pendants. Okay, so a while back when I was busy playing around with this technique, I made a pendant, and this is the shape that I cut out of the Pebio paint. And I really, really like the shape, and I think it would work really well for this one. So you can use any shape you want, this is a great way to use templates if you happen to have one, because cutters are not going to work for this. And I'm just going to position it just about there. And I'm going to grab a pen just be careful and I'll show you how to use a uh, proper template in a minute but for now I'm just trimming this out okay. and I can remove that pen pretty easily but we want to just use our ruler and our craft knife to trim this out now. So I'm just going to choose a section, press down on it, and I'm sorry you can't see that very well. But you just press your ruler down and then use your blade to cut out. And I typically like to do geometric, sharp geometric shapes for this, like squares, rectangles, um, and just kind of arbitrary geometric shapes like this. I wouldn't use circles or ovals. Um, that's going to be quite a bit harder to trim out. Of course, it's completely up to you. If you feel up to this challenge, you most certainly can do that. Personally, I prefer not to. Okay, and I messed up that last one. And I'll fix that in just a moment. Okay. So now that I've got pretty much cut out, I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and snip that to get it nice and sharp again. Just need to trim it a little bit more down the same. Okay. There I'm just checking that the other ones aren't rounded. Because we don't want any rounded sections. Okay. Then grab a wet wipe, and typically that is pretty good at removing pen. The pen doesn't really stick to the Pebio paint. There you can see that removed it very easily. And I will go back here and I will remove that pen as well. And there we are, you can see no damage whatsoever from the pen. And we have this nice piece. So that's number one. And I've got a few other pieces that I showed you earlier in the video. So let's see. And these ones. I've been drying for um, quite a few months actually because I generally do a few and then pour them out. So let's try a template with these ones. Okay, so I've got a Lucy Clay template here. This is Lucy Clay template number 14. And I know that it's not a geometric shape. I just want to show you how it goes if uh, we use a non-geometric shape. So we can either trim it out like this 
or we can place this down which I think is probably what I want to do but we'll first use this to choose the area that I like so just kind of move it around see what you like I really like this spot over here okay now place that down and actually I think I'll probably trim it out using this so I'm just going to really press down nice and hard and then start trimming mm. and this might give a little bit of trouble okay so if it is giving trouble I'll just use the pen quickly And of course the pen is giving trouble as well. Give me a moment. I will just quickly trace out around here and then I'll show you what it looks like. There we are. Now I'm going to trim that out. Just go nice and slowly. Don't rush it. And I will just trim out the shape. Let me find where I was. Like so. But you can see this is a little bit more challenging than a um, geometric shape. But it is doable. Almost done. Okay. Nearly done. There we are. So we can just start breaking that up. Follow your trace line. And I'll just continue trimming it out until I have got it completely trimmed out. Okay, then when we're done, we're just going to quickly scrub away any pen. I had to swap the pen so this one sticks a little bit more to the paint. But you should be able to get it off with a bit of scrubbing. And then after this, I like to just go and make sure that I've trimmed it up properly, like this section. I've got a little section hanging over there. I like to just round out some edges that I might have cut a little jagged. Just to neaten it up a bit. But in general, I find that the uh, geometric ones work better. Needs to be rounded up a bit. Okay. So now we've got our two pieces. I might make a few more, but for now we're going to stick with these two. They look quite nice. Now that we've got these two, I am going to bring over a piece of black clay that has been rolled out on my thickest setting, which is about two millimeters thick. And I've got it on a piece of plain printing paper. And I'm just going to bring over another piece of plain printing paper. And I'm going to give it a burnish. And what we'll do here is we're going to smooth out fingerprints and we're just going to give it a nice, consistent. Uh, texture. Very light, smooth texture. There you, you can see that. And we're going to ignore the edges. So I'm going to start with this one and you will repeat with the other one. I'm just going to lay this down like so. 
And now you can either leave it on the top there and cut it out, or you can do what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to take my paper again, and I'm very gently going to start burnishing this into my clay. And this can take a little bit of time and uh, persistence. But just work that into your clay and try and get it flat. That's the part that can take a little bit of time because I find that uh, the edges go in pretty quickly but the top part starts to dome. So you want to rub across the entire piece making sure that you don't have any areas that are doming. Okay, and that feels just about right. So let's have a look. And there we are. We can see that it's starting to form. We've got a little line over there, and of course, we had a little bit of a lift up over here. So I'll just bring over another piece because that one got too much clay on it. And I'm just going to continue burnishing for a little bit longer. And there we go. You shouldn't really be able to see a seam. Now, one thing that I like to do then is I like to go over and go in the direction. Um, I like to rub over the line like so. And that just covers up any remaining uh, imperfections there are. Okay. And that looks pretty good. I'm just going to give it one more pass very quickly with the paper just to give it that nice consistency. There we are. Okay, and then you can use a cutter if you want, or you can use a blade to trim it out like I am going to. Now I like to use the blade and I like to go along with the angles like so and then I'll trim the entire way around like that. Okay and here is how it looks. So you can see that looks fantastic. Now you want to try and get the border to be symmetrical the whole way around. I know that's going to be a little bit tricky but it's quite important. So just go and make sure that it looks pretty symmetrical to you. And just smooth these edges as well. And then I'll put this in the oven exactly as it is. I won't lift it up off of the piece of paper. I'll leave it exactly like that. You can see it is well stuck on there. I don't want to touch it because if you do that the pebio paint, um, the clay will flex a bit and the pebio paint will come out or it will create a very visible seam. So when you are burnishing your clay make sure you are doing it on a piece of plain printing paper um, and then keep it on there. We're going to worry about the backing and the bail later. For now we just want to leave it the way it is so that it stays beautiful and perfect the way it is. Let me actually bring that up so you can get a close-up shot of that. It looks really, really nice. And now, of course, you could leave it like that, or you could... Um, sorry, excuse me. Yes, you can put some resin on. That is exactly what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to put this in the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And now I have found that Pebio paint does tend to yellow a bit in the oven, so when doing these projects, I would tend to stay on the green color spectrum. Oh, sorry, the uh, yellower side of the color spectrum. So working with oranges, reds, golds, yellows, greens, uh, goldish greens, and goldish blues is definitely what I would work with. Because if you put something like this in the oven, I find that it tends to uh, take on a yellow tint to it. So try to stay away from blues and work more with kind of browns, greens, reds. Um, you can even try purples, but they're going to take on a little bit of a gold tint, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm just going to put this to the side and we will take care of that in a little while. For now, I'm going to show you what to do with the other one. 
this piece over here. So roll out your piece of clay again, like so. Place that down. Grab another piece of plain printing paper and burnish it. And if we're lucky, we will not have to do the backing on either of these because when we are burnishing the clay down using this piece of paper, we're also burnishing the back uh, because it is sitting on a piece of plain printing paper. So if you want to, you can flip and do the back as well. Completely up to you. But in general, I think the back turns out really well. Unless you wanted a specific texture on it, then you could just go and redo it if you wanted to, uh, once your piece is baked. So now I'm just going to put this in and slide it over so that it doesn't trap any air bubbles. Then, again, you will place this over the top and you will burnish thoroughly for about two minutes until it feels flat under your fingers. If you can distinguish the shape over here based on touch, uh, it is not smooth enough. However, once it is smoothed down and you can't really distinguish that shape, that means that it is burnished in pretty well. You can have a look at it. You might need to do a few adjustments, but in general it means that you're just about ready to go. So this one will burnish down quicker because it's not as wide an object. And when you're burnishing, don't always burnish from one direction. Turn it if you want to. You're working on a piece of plain printing paper, so you can turn it quite easily. And uh, yeah, that feels like it should be just about done. Now we're just going to lift this carefully. And I'm going to have to burnish it again because the clay does tend to get stuck on the printing paper if you work it for a little too long. But you can see that's pretty well done. There we are. Now, just gently smooth along the sides here and that will smooth out any irregularities. There we are, looking good. Alright, then I'll just do one more burnish because we want that to have a nice smooth texture. There we are. Alright, and then if you did it with a template, bring over a template. And generally templates have multiple sizes, like with this one. So I'm going to take out this other piece. And we'll see how that fits. That will fit quite nicely. Now I just need to hover that over and get it in the right spot. I think that's just about right. And then I'm just going to gently press down. And then I'm going to use my craft knife and this part you want to be careful with because if you don't go nice and slowly your craft knife will dig into something and I constantly am doing that. I'm a culprit of rushing things. So just very slowly, very methodically, I'm gonna go on the outside constantly pushing against the edge of the metal. And don't push too hard because remember you do have printing paper under this and that can give a little bit of resistance. There we are. That looks like it's good. So I'm just going to lift that up. And we will lift this up as well. And now this is not going to come out as cleanly if you had used a tent, uh, just cut it out with a blade, uh, the geometric shape that I showed you earlier but you can very easily fix it. Just run your finger along the edge, smooth it out. And if you have a trouble area like over here, I'll just use my blade to very gently cut away most of the area. That is causing issues. And then I'll just smooth. Thank you. 
And remember, you can also use cutters if you want. What you could do with the cutter, if you wanted to use it, is um, you could take that, get some sort of a black ink pad, make sure it's not um, stays on ink because that will stain your paper paint. Just any kind of cheap ink will work. Uh, bring that over, press your base of the cutter into that and then press that onto the Pebio paint use that to trim out your uh, outside and then use a larger version of that cutter to trim out your uh, clay edge okay and now I'm just trimming here give it a good clean And you can see it has a completely different look than the other one. And again, I'm just going to put this in the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And we will see how it looks when we are done. I've just got this one area here that has a little divot in it that I need to fix. Okay, and then I'll pop these into the oven. Just remember to smooth that top. And so here they are out of the oven and so hopefully you can see here that this one uh, has gone quite a bit more gold uh, the white is more of a ivory color rather than gold it still looks really nice but this is an example of uh, what you need to be careful of when you're doing this project because the um, the paper paints really do go quite yellow after being in the oven so you can see here the orange and red have diminished and gone a little bit more on the yellow side so please keep that in mind when you are working with them because I don't want you to put a beautiful blue, white and purple piece in the oven and then find that it turns into this really muddy yellow colour. Okay, so now this one's got a little boo-boo over here. I wonder if you can see that. It's got a little crack. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to show you how to do that. Grab some liquid clay and I'm using some Sculpey Black liquid clay. And I'm going to see if I can do this with a skewer, but I might need a brush. Let's see. Just want a little bit. Just going to paint it over that. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe away from the Pebio paint. You don't want to wipe towards, you always wipe away. Okay. And that will fill in that crack. Okay, and I actually baked these for only 40 minutes because I decided an hour you don't really need to do with this amount of clay and the longer it's in the more the paper paint goes yellow. Okay, and actually instead of putting a bale on the back I thought that these would look quite nice with little hangy bales and that means that it doesn't have to go in the oven again which is great. Alright, so let me just quickly clean up that sculpey and this one I'll put in for a quick five minutes in the oven so that it um, cures that liquid clay. There we are, out of the oven now. Okay, so now you can either leave the backs the way they are. I just peeled them off of the paper once they'd cooled a little bit and you can see that they have a beautiful matte back. But I do want to just give it a light sand with a 400 grit just to get rid of any slight imperfections that there might be. So I'm just going to move that to the side. There are some very slight areas where it just um, doesn't look completely uh, even the whole way over. So with this project the goal is to limit as much the amount of time that your piece goes in the oven. If it can only go in one time that is the absolute best. Uh, but just try to keep it to about an hour at maximum oven time. So I put this in for half an about 40 minutes. But that's because I decided I was not going to put a bale on the back. If you're going to put a bale on the back, um, 
only put it in for about half an hour. Okay, and I'm just giving these sides a quick sand to tidy them up. Yeah, and don't worry about the front. That's nice and clean, we don't have to worry about that. And so you can see here, hopefully, the difference between the two. This one's got some slight marks on the back and the edges do need a little bit of a sand. So I'll do the same with this one quickly. Okay, and now you can see the backs. Now that we have got the whole thing sanded, just gently check to make sure there aren't any areas that have problems. Like here there is a little area that I just want to trim off lightly with my blade. And there as well. And generally that comes off quite smoothly. You will need to sand there again. But just check, because especially with this one, uh, with the other one not so much, but this one we do have some uneven sides. There we are. And then just grab that sandpaper again and just sand that back to mat. Okay. Right. Now I want you to take some Renaissance wax. And just grab a little bit of that. Just take it a little on my finger. And this stuff lasts forever. I've had this for about six years now, and I'm about halfway through this tiny little pot. It is a brilliant investment. I think they cost about $36. That's how much my one cost. It can vary, but trust me, it is a brilliant varnish. It works on almost everything. And I absolutely love it. Next to resin, it is one of my favourite varnishes. I think I actually use it more than resin nowadays. Okay, so I've just taken that and I've brushed it on the sides and the back. Don't worry about the front. We don't want Renaissance wax on the front because we're going to be putting a resin there. But putting the, res the Renaissance wax on the back also will help with any spills that we might encounter later on. Because I find that the resin comes off easier if you do have some wax on the back. There we are. Now we are ready to buff. You can use a soft denim cloth to buff if you want, or you can use a buffing wheel if you have one. So I've got this Dremel 3000 and this buffing wheel that I made myself. This one actually has been about two years old now. So you can see it's starting to get down and worn out, but I really like it. So let's see how this does. And you can see here it has a nice finish to the back now. So now we are going to prep this for resin. So bring over a silicone mat and this is brilliant for working with resin because any spills you have will leak mostly into the mat which leaves um, it sticking to the side and back which can be easily remedied due to the renaissance wax. And now I tend to like using UV resin nowadays because first off it is faster than uh, the 24 hour long ice resin and also with some pendants such as this one where if I do make a mistake with the resin and I try to pull it off the paint would come out. Uh, the UV resin such as Lisa Bavalka's Magic Gloss has a higher doming factor and so it doesn't spill off the sides so easily. So I generally do use this Magic Gloss. And if you're looking for a place to uh, buy this, uh, Teresa at, Ter at Tiny Pandora does carry a nice little bottle of this. And also I do believe Linda at Linda's Arts Pot also carries it, so I'll provide links to both of those shops. Okay, I'm just going to open that up and I'm just going to pour a nice line of resin onto my piece and I'll start off with a little bit don't go overboard no pun intended 
just gently pour a little bit on and then you can always pour more if you need you can it's a lot harder to take off the resin than it is to put it on to put more on so just drag it to the edges and I really like the magic gloss I know that a lot of people do have trouble with the magic gloss due to the fact that it does dome a lot so it drags from the edges but you need to put a lot more of this resin onto a piece uh, than normal resin because it creates a fantastic dome and it means that you can get, get excuse me you can get a really nice dome and you don't have to worry about the resin um, pulling off of the piece which is really nice so if you are having trouble with magic gloss it's probably because you're not putting enough resin on there is a fine balance between putting too much on and too little um, but I find that this is a much easier resin to work with than ice resin ice resin is a great resin it is cheaper than the magic gloss um, but it's got a lot more uh, not excuse me it's got a lot more uh, steps to it and there's a lot more room for you to make a mistake so if you're just beginning with resin start with magic gloss and then later on if you're working on a budget uh, you can move on to the uh, ice resin because it definitely is cheaper um, and work with that or you can stick with the magic gloss like I am Okay, and I'm just dragging these out to the edges and I can see that it is already pulling from edges I'm not got, I've not got anywhere near enough resin on there but it's better to be safe than sorry so I'll pour a bit more on there and if you have air bubbles don't worry about them just yet if they're really nice large ones like this just grab your skewer and try to pop them but small ones you can either just scoop out like so or you can see if they will pop by themselves Okay, and I'm just going to drag this to the edges again and you can see that little crack around here you can't see it there's a tiny little lip there where the crack was but it's barely visible okay and I will repeat the entire process that I'm doing on the other pendants and then I'll check back on this one see if it has pulled away from the edges I'll add a little bit more if I need to and I will scoop out the little air bubbles because you don't want those you can use a lighter if you want, but I don't really like lighters. They're a little bit scary. Okay, I'll repeat with this one and then show you what they look like. Okay, and there they are. They look absolutely stunning. I love how they look. And now this one, you are going to have some trouble with the sharp corners. Um, I find that uh, the resin has a little bit of trouble with the sharp corners. Uh, but if you only have a tiny, tiny amount of a space where your resin is pulling away I prefer to just leave it it doesn't really make very much of a difference if you can get the resin to um, if you can pour just enough resin to get those covered that is wonderful but a lot of the time I find that once I get to that point I end up pouring up off too much resin so I like to just leave it at this point and I am going to put this in the UV light for a full half an hour um, at least sometimes I'll even put it in for an hour to make sure that this is rock hard when we come to finish them off all right so these have been in the UV lamp for around an hour now I'm just gonna take them out and thankfully we had no spills because it drew back a tiny amount from the top here and this one it also drew back a little bit from the top but generally I don't worry about that you can barely notice it all right so now you're going to need some sort of a pin drill and you want to choose the top of your pendant and I'm going to be choosing it here okay and do I want to hang it like that or like that? yes like that okay and I'm just going to start drilling and I always do it resin side to polymer clay so the resin side always must be facing up because I just find that you end up with better results because if you go back from the other if you push from the other direction first off you're going to be pushing the resin out uh, and also in this project you're going to find that you're going to be pushing the pebio paint out as well so um, if I were you 
try to um, work resin side facing up. So there we have got a nice tiny little neat hole there. I'll repeat with this one. There we are. Now I'm just going to be using some bales and here is the size I'm using. And I want two of those. Okay. And I also am going to be using rubber cord, the ready-made ones. And you can also get these off of my Etsy shop dressimmer design. So I'll move that out of the way. Grab your bale. insert it into your hole and then give a pinch I'm just giving it a very quick pinch and then I'm going to use my pliers to do that work for me just make sure it's in the hole there we go and you can see that moves around freely but it should not be able to slip out so I might press it a little bit more okay there we are and I'll repeat with this one and now once you've done that just take your rubber cord slip that through and it's got this easy slip in clasp there we are and these are really fun pendants to make and they really don't actually take a lot of time you can do a whole bunch of them at one time they're great for markets they look like they took forever to make uh, the only lengthy part really is waiting for the papier paint to dry but you can make a whole bunch of them at one time and then uh, just let those dry okay And there we are so let me just move those around so you can see them there we go now you might have a few fingerprints on them after this so just take a quick wet wipe and just give it a quick run over to clean up fingerprints there we are and you should end up with some really beautiful pendants to go on some necklaces so I do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, I certainly did. Remember you can use these to create earrings as well, they would look really nice as earrings. Uh, key earrings also work, so play around with that. And if you would like more tutorials like this, please do subscribe to this channel and be sure to like the videos, that is always helpful to me. If you would like to see uh, early access to a few things, uh, photos and all sorts of other updates and fun challenges, please do join my Facebook group on Facebook. It is called Jessima Tutorials Polymer Clay Community and there is a link below the video in the description box, so please do check that out. And if you would like to support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon community. Um, you can sign up on any of the levels and each of those uh, levels help to support this channel and support me putting out tutorials every single week. And I am trying to put out more than one tutorial a week now, so if you would like to keep that going, please do consider becoming a patron. And also, if you would like more to tools for your polymer clay, such as cutters, texture stamps, molds, and all sorts of other things, please do consider checking out my Etsy shop, just in my design. There will also be a link to that and Patreon in the description below the video. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.